For the words you've just heard among the finest, mightiest, most specific words given to us by the Savior, the one we call Savior. Words of instruction, words on how to, words to be applied. You've heard me say this many times, but here today we have a teaching that has meat in it that you can take home with you and apply immediately to all situations. So prepare to hear what the Lord has sent down through time for each of us, each in our own way, for every circumstance you are facing, the how to live in the presence of God, the how to change our ways so that we can be fully the people that we know we should be, that we were born to be. These are mighty teachings. We begin with that Old Testament proverb, which says in no uncertain terms, the wisdom of the chosen people of the Hebrews, uh, listen to my instruction and be wise. How much more plain can that be? Listen to instruction, hear it, receive it. Don't drift away on this one. I want to point out to you that the teaching we're about to receive from the Christ is embedded in a complex metaphor having to do with servants waiting at the door. And if you hadn't noticed in the reading here today, we find the ancient teaching long before the Christ saying, Blessed is the one who listens, watching daily at my doors. So the Holy One who comes with such radical teaching, with not merely a continuance from the past, but a break into something entirely new. Right here we see rooted in that wisdom of ancient times. Of a people who knew that waiting at the door, that expectancy of the presence of God was fundamental to our humanity. These words from Proverbs goes on saying, Whoever finds me finds life. Now you might say, I've already got life. But you know it means more. Finds that life that is joy. That life that is what you thought it should have been. That life that as a little child you thought you had. Of wonder and innocence and delight. Before you became a grown up and got all crippled. With obligations and concerns and worries and forgetfulness of that which is beautiful and holy. You find life by finding spirit. That means you don't think about it. You don't just say you believe in it. You experience the holiness of life. And you find true life. He goes on to say, receives then favor from the Lord. Just want to point that out. That if we apply these teachings of waiting at the door, as we'll find out in a minute... We're told here in the Holy Writ that we receive favor. That the goodness of God comes through. If we are awake enough, if we are alert, if we apply the teachings of Jesus on how to do that. So if you'd like a little favor from the Lord, this is the way to do it. The way to open yourself to it. And then there are verses that were not read this morning, but we must deal with them again in Proverbs. But whosoever fails to find me harms himself. Another translation, injures himself. Do you understand what that means as universal teaching? We hurt ourselves if we do not live with that openness to spirit. It's not about being spiritual or not. Adding a little bit of that as a hobby. It's that without that awakening to what really is, to our true purpose, to the heart of reality, we injure ourselves. Do you know anybody who's injured in that way? Do you know people who have given up hope on life, who live in a darkness of unhappiness? Salvation is to be lifted out of that, to be healed from that. So let's hear the practical words on how that happens. But finally, these words conclude with all who hate me love death. Some people have called our culture a culture of death. Have you heard that? 
you look at all those apocalyptic movies, all those super violent movies, it's not hard to see what they mean. To not love that which is the principle of goodness in life is to love death, is to, is to magnetize towards an emptiness that is death even before we die. So once again, let's find that life. Let's find that purpose of existence which is our birthright. And so we go to the teachings that come from the one we call the Christ. Here they are. Again, encoded. Not only encoded, but translations of translations. Be dressed for action. What does that mean? Let's go back to the original Greek. Gird your loins is what those words are. And the translation wanted to make it as whitewashed as possible as watered down as possible. What does that mean? First century, everybody dressed like this. And I must admit, it's very comfortable dressed like this. You don't have to have a big belt ripping your stomach and all of that. However, you can't move too fast in these clothes, can you? You do not want to go jogging in this. So what they did was they would grab the material, wrap it up around their belt, and their legs were free to go. And that was being ready. And this is a metaphor of a psychological condition, of a condition of energy, a state of mind that is ready. You know what it is to not be ready? To wander through your life half asleep, to be totally distracted, to not pay attention. You know that thing about being on the cell phone at 60 miles an hour? That's distraction. That's not being focused, not being ready. How about the one with the cell phone where they're backing up at the same time? That's painful. You know that's not going to end well someday. This is about focusing your awareness in a way that includes that which is holy, that which is spiritual. Think of the power God has given us. We can tune God out or tune God in. And most of the time we're so lazy we just flip channels all day long. Paying no attention. No wonder we're full of worry and fear and uncertainty. Because all of that strength lies in connection with spirit. It's that simple. Be dressed for actions and have your lamps lit. Those oil, oil lamps of old that were like primitive flashlights. What do you think he means by have your lamps lit? It's not literal. It's not supernatural. It is conscious awareness. Conscious awareness. You know the difference between paying attention and not paying attention? Let me see if you are paying attention. <laughs> you can see it on your face. You pay attention when you are. Your energy is laser beamed at something. And usually we pick what we want to pay attention to. Don't you know that awful old story of the husband and wife, right? Never paying attention. If you love something, someone, you pay attention. If we love God, we pay attention. And Jesus is telling us that we have to intentionally do it. It doesn't come naturally. We have to make an effort. We have to make that internal effort of remembrance. Especially in those moments when it's hard to. When you're in an argument, when you're upset about something, you know those moments. They're most of our moments, aren't they, unfortunately? That's when we forget. That's when we need to have that lamp lit, to be like the servant at the door waiting for the master. Now, what does that mean? First century Palestine, those weddings would take a week of celebration. They did it right in those days, I guess. And the servant's job, only job, was to be there at the door when that wedding party returned home, when the bride and groom came back to their dwelling so that they could open the door in celebration. Can you imagine if after all that joy, the bride and groom come home, knock at the door, there's nobody there. They can't get in. It's dark on the porch. It was important. It was critical to the whole event. And Jesus uses that humble, simple event to describe that profound reality of how we need to live our lives. 
ready to open that door of the heart of awareness to God. What might that mean in real life? In my line of work, you know, there's a lot of times when it gets pretty heavy. When you're dealing with somebody who's got troubles. And you can go at it several ways. You can go with what the textbooks say, with what your mind can come up with, or you can open yourself to spirit and let inspiration come through and give you what that person needs. May you know people like that in your life. They do exist. Perhaps you know that experience yourself. Something is handed to you by spirit that is nothing you could have come up with that is a gift to the other person. Just between you and me, I try to live there all the time. I try to live there right here so that something can come through to you, all you different yous there, receiving it in different ways, filtering in different ways so that God can have a word with you that I couldn't possibly come up with myself. We are designed for that ability, you know that? We just have to keep our lamps burning, stand at the door ready, be prepared for it, expect it. If you have no expectation of miracle, of mystery, of the sacred, there isn't going to be any. And most of the world lives that way. Don't live that way. Discover for yourself, not through some forced belief, some old dogma, some institutional teaching, through lived experience. That's all this is. Words of fire. Words that turn the spirit alive. So we have this. Be awake. When the master knocks, open immediately. And you know what that means? How many times have you had an intuition that you ought to do this or you ought to say that and you let it go by and something unfortunate happens? An opportunity, a moment is missed of blessing another person. When that spirit touches your heart, open immediately. Don't let the mind get in the way and say, well, let me think about this. Or maybe I shouldn't. And he goes on to say that this master, this mystery which is spirit, for those who are paying attention, for those who want to live in its reality, the master will come in and eat with them. What a beautiful poetic metaphor. We'll commune with you. We'll have interaction with you. We'll break bread with you. And even more, we'll serve you. Let that soak into your mind, to your heart. Spirit will serve you. Not just want to know you, not just want to interact. We'll give to you out of love. Now that's a new teaching, friends. Nobody else was saying words like that in human history before. This is unique to the Christ. And he goes on to say, Blessed are you, you who seek to be alive in God, alive in spirit, in spite of ego, in spite of other things pulling you down. Blessed are you when in the middle of the night, or at early dawn, the Master shows up. Another glorious metaphor. What do you think the middle of the night might mean? In the darkest hour, when it's hardest to think of God, when you're at your lowest, at your most desperate, when you're in deep darkness, and you stay with your lamp lit, your faith alive, blessed are you, says the Holy One. And then he switches on us suddenly to help Shape, in, shape that teaching into something we can grasp. Know this, he says, if the owner of the house had known at what hour the thief was coming, he would not have let him break into his house. You're the owner of the house. It's your mind, it's your heart. If you were awake, you would have not allowed the thief to steal from you. Who do you think the thief is? In the 7th century, one of the great teachers of Christianity, John Climacus, gave this teaching. 
be like on top of a mountain looking down on your vineyard and watch where the thieves come in. What are the thieves? Pride, anger, selfishness. All those things that are ungodly in us, in our psychology, all those attitudes that are crystallized, those judgments, all those things that rob that which is beautiful and holy within us. So that watch, that lamp lit is an objective view of yourself. Watching from on high what is going on within. Have you ever done that? Have you ever separated yourself from your thoughts, your feelings enough to watch it and see where it is coming from and to whom it belongs and what the Holy One would have to say about it? That's intense. Let me give you another teaching, a strange one now. Words of Jesus found in the Gospel of Thomas in 1945, dug up out of the earth after 2,000 years. Scholars say the Gospel of Thomas was the origin for the Gospel of Mark and Matthew. And here's a saying you haven't heard before from Jesus. How about that for a treat? Fortunate is the one who knows where the thief will enter. Fortunate is the one who knows his or her weakness, that Achilles heel, where something can take you down. And don't you know how far down we can go when we don't pay attention to ourselves? The enemy's not out there, it's in here. That's what the Holy One is saying to us. Imagine that degree of awareness, that remembrance of God that allows you to be able to say honestly to yourself, I don't want to feel this way. I'm not going to go with it. It's not going to take over my life. Do that one time. And I promise you, you will experience a miracle. You will experience making a choice in the moment that will change your day, change another person's experience, and reveal to you how realistic these words are. But there's another side to this teaching, which goes on after the scriptures read today. We hear how blessed we will be if we are found at work, psychological work, awakened human beings. We're told that we will be put in charge of all God's possessions. And we know that's not literal. We know it's not about stuff. To be put in charge of all God's possessions is to be able to deal with everything that comes at you from life. To be able to be lifted up over the storm. Promise from the Savior himself. However, if you or I begin to say, well, the master's delayed, nothing's happening, he's not watching, and the metaphor is he begins to beat the other servants. In other words, he begins to mistreat other human beings and gets drunk. What does that mean? lives any old way, nothing matters. Whatever comes in, whatever you feel, go for it. Gets drunk. Loses that focus on the way God calls us to live. Hear the words of the Lord now. The Master will come on a day that he does not expect, at an hour he does not know, and he will cut him to pieces and send him among the unbelievers. What is that? That ought to get our attention. Consequences for not living the spiritual life. For living any old way. Like so many do. Be thrown out among the unbelievers. Outer darkness. Meaninglessness. Imagine coming to the end of your life full of meaninglessness. It's a grim situation. I've seen it. Don't let that happen to you. It's not that God is a harsh judge, it's that there are consequences to our actions. And Jesus is here today to save us from that. When he says the Son of Man comes at an unexpected hour, that's not the second coming. That's truth coming into your life. Conscience, face to face with how you live in the here and now. 
And he ends this teaching by saying, everyone to whom much has been given, much will be required. And friends, I'm sorry to tell you, but much has been given to you. Just today, you've been given a teaching from the Holy One. That's a lot. There's a whole lot of people who have no idea about any of this. They live any old way. They don't know any better. We know better. We have been spoken to. Much has been given to help us along the way. And much is required that we live it out, that we become those people who say they believe in God, who want to live the way of Christ, who want to find the full potential of what it means to be a child of God. It's ours now. May we live it out today and every day. The word of the Lord. Would you pray with me? Lord Jesus, help us to receive these words, this wisdom, to apply it in the everyday moments of our lives and to discover the divine truth within. We pray this in your holy name. Amen.